welcome to Curvy Stitches, my sewing, crafting, and vintage styling channel. My name is Vanessa and thanks for joining me. Today I thought I would take a retrospective, a look back, a walkthrough of all the aprons that I have. I actually have a large number of aprons. Nine aprons. I have nine aprons. I don't know if aprons are really as popular as they used to be back in the day, but I love aprons. Whenever I'm doing stuff around the house, I immediately feel better if I have aprons on. So how did I get into wearing aprons? Honestly, it's because I used to work at Joanne Fabrics. In addition to your, you know, uniform, you had to wear an apron. I actually still have my apron from Joanne's. I don't know if I was supposed to um, give it back, <laughs> but here it is. It's a simple apron. It's got nice big pockets in the front. This little bit right here is perfect for holding scissors or pens. If you see right here, that's an oil stain <laughs> from all the pens that I would hold in my apron. But it's, aprons are just useful. So one of the fun things about working at Joann's is you're allowed to wear your own personal apron. The only rules are they have to be thematic to whatever month it is. So Christmas aprons in December, not April. And they should be made with fabric from the store. I do know of a lot of people <laughs> who worked with me at Joann's who were just like, yeah, I just used whatever fabric I had on hand. Cause honestly, I don't think anyone has ever asked me, where did you get the fabric for your apron? For me, I was working part time. I was on a budget. I was fresh out of college and I didn't want to spend too much money on fabric. So my plan was to wait until fabric went into the remnants bin. You get fabric cut at the cutting counter. Once they reach the last yard of fabric, they'll still cut that fabric and they'll roll it up and put it in the remnants bin with a nice little label that says it's now 50% off. So because of that, and because of course people are buying seasonal fabrics, I would always get nice sizable pieces of fabric around the different holidays and then use that when making my aprons. The last six months that I worked at Joann's was when I really started this process and I just so happened to start it in January. Why January? Because my birthday's in January and I just wanted to make a new apron for my birthday. So I put together this little lookbook of all the aprons that I've made up until now. I hope you enjoy. So let's start the lookbook. This first apron I made using a very simple pattern, McCall's 2233. This pattern is really made for a chef's uniform, nothing complicated. I made this one with a single yard of this pretty blue fabric with some teal accents. It was good for a first time making an apron, but I quickly realized that quilting cotton is much thinner than the material my work apron was made out of, and it just didn't feel right. So, the next apron I made, which I inverted the colors on, I made it more durable. This apron is also a one yard wonder, Simplicity 1221. I lined the inside with this pretty white snowflake fabric. This is a nice, cute, simple apron and it's one of my favorites. I love the silhouette, but I'm not the biggest fan of my pocket placement, which is completely my fault. I love symmetry and I didn't have enough fabric left over to make a second pocket, so I put the one pocket I had straight over the crotch. But then February came and we had to change our thematic uniforms. So I just had to make this heart-shaped apron. It was just calling my name. Especially after I found this Valentine Star Wars print in the remnants bin, which I paired with another heart print. This is such a fun, almost cheesy apron. It's got a heart on top, the heart on the bottom, even the pockets are hearts. I made sure to cut two of them this time so that I could have one for each hand. I just like to do my hands in my pockets. And I made sure to line the apron with another layer of cotton. This next apron is from the same pattern. You can tell because it has the same heart pocket design. This one I made from this pretty red floral print and I lined it with some burgundy fabric that actually was some old curtains I turned into a costume a long time ago. I find the shape on this one kind of kind of funky, but I love the ruffle at the bottom. I was trying to use up what fabric I had and I did not have enough red fabric for the top and bottom, but I did have a lot of this pink fabric just lying around, so there you go. To make it more cohesive, I added this pink trim 
along the pockets and the bib. It's not bias tape, it's, I believe it's called stay tape. Don't quote me on that. By this point, I was on a roll, so I continued with the same pattern theme. This one I call my workhouse apron. It is made out of a durable, thick cotton. It's more of a canvas than anything. And this one's really made for protecting your clothes. You're, you're fully covered from the neck down. It's got nice, deep, roomy pockets. I bound the pockets and the neckline with burgundy bias tape, but then I ran out and had to use some burgundy satin ribbon to finish off the outer edges. It's a really rough finish, and at that point I was definitely rushing, but you know what? It's my apron. I find it cute. It's not the end of the world. While the front of this apron is really simple, the inside is lined with this adorable cat print. And I didn't have enough of this cat print to make anything else. I got it out the remnants bin, but I thought it would be a perfect surprise lining. The next month was March, and of course I had to make a St. Patrick's Day apron. This one is made from Simplicity 2592, and I got the fabric again out of the remnants bin. It's one of my favorite aprons. It's so cute. I love the ribbon trim. I love the contrast between the print and the solid cotton. I lined this one in black and yellow, mainly because I ran out of black before I was finished with the apron, so I just cut some yellow. All these aprons are just a hodgepodge of whatever I had lying around. Oh, uh, you don't want to hear what I'm saying right here. I'm just doing a very, very terrible Irish accent. Just let's move on. Now, for the months of April, May, and June, I didn't make a thematic apron. So instead, I wore this. This is a handmade apron that I found at a yard sale. It was in a box full of other fabric, including the fabric used to make this apron. To me, it seems like a 60s design, maybe because of the color, maybe because of the cut, but I like it. I wear it every now and then. I did add a pocket because I just can't at this point have an apron without a pocket. So I added a little pocket that I got off of an old button-up shirt. Whoever made it used bias tape to make the waist ties. I'm not a fan of that. I actually find them to be really tiny and limp. And then July came around and I couldn't resist all the red, white, and blue remnants. This apron is Butterick 6467. I made it out of a patchwork print. I trimmed it with gathered white fabric. I lined this apron in blue and white and made sure to add a second pocket, like always. With every new apron, I have to have two pockets. This apron just screams picnic time to me, like I need to wear it to a picnic. I don't know why you would wear an apron to a picnic, but it just feels like a picnic apron. And then right after that, I made this star-spangled apron, also from Butterick 6467. This one, I think, is just pure aesthetics. It's got adorable little triangle pockets, but they are too tiny for anything bigger than a tube of lipstick. It's lined in a white linen, so it still has a good amount of body. This one I only wear if I want to say, Oh look, how cute I am at this 4th of July that I am totally not cooking at. Oh no, I couldn't possibly actually carry anything. This apron barely covers my dress. I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory road with all my aprons. I'll probably start making aprons again now that it's August and we're starting to go into the fall and then the winter and I don't have any fall themed aprons. I definitely have a lot of old fabric to work my way through and I still have at least six other apron patterns that I haven't even opened yet. Maybe in a few weeks or months I'll do another update and I'll have more aprons to show. but. Thanks for watching!